10 o'clock uh, Wednesday, uh, October 22nd, called the uh, Mongay County Commission uh, meeting to order. I ask that you please stand for a moment of silent meditation and remain standing for the pledge. $1,984.76 for tax years 2013 and 14. Fiduciary orders as of October 22nd and approval of services for Lynn Crane, Fiduciary Commissioner. Vouchers, General County Fund, $810,507.82. General County Fund Purchasing Card, $29,171.88. Cole Severance Fund, $7,512.64. Kent Muffley, $1,187.33. Chestnut Ridge Park, 5,595.01. Mason Dixon Park, 738.97. Mason Dixon Park Purchasing Card, $240.47. Assessor's Valuation Fund, $19.40. Home Confinement Fund, $1,564.35. For a total of $856,537.87. And I have one budget revision. This one we discussed last week, but it's actually increasing the miscellaneous revenue. Uh, by $40,000 and increasing <coughs> dams and dredging by 40000 and this will accommodate the pass-through funds and keep them separate right. in a line item that we can recognize when we start dispersing this. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion for approval and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Renetta. One item for reimbursement today, JABG grant for September of 2014 for $2,331.35. That's all the reimbursements I have this morning. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion. Have a motion. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> we have a motion and a second on favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion yeah, carried. Twice you've done that oh, today. I almost signed Tom Bloom's name right here, yeah. too. I'm, I'm not sure about that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have a, a grant award from the West Virginia Bureau of Senior, Senior Services for the Triune Halleck um, Senior Center for $3,000. Oh, so great. Yeah. Oh, Move for approval of the $3,000. Second. Grant, grant award. And a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. You're welcome. Proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. That's you, huh? <laughs> you want to state your names? Yes, sir, we have for the record. We have. Uh, Brittany Warnick. Okay. Are you with the Domestic Violence? Yeah, right for the Domestic Violence Information Center. Okay. Proclamation, whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy and dignity, security, and humanity due to systemic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control, and or abuse, including abuse to children and the elderly. And whereas the problem of domestic violence are not confined to any group or groups of people, but cut across all economic, racial, and societal barriers, and are supported by societal indifferences. And whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting individuals and society as a whole here in this community, throughout the United States and the world. And whereas it has battered women themselves who have been in the forefront of efforts to bring peace and equality to the home. Now therefore, in recognition of the important work done by the Rape and Domestic Violence Information Center serving Monongalia, Preston, and Taylor counties, as well as all other domestic violence programs, 
The Monongalia County Commission does hereby proclaim the month of October to be National Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urges all citizens to actively participate in the scheduled activities and programs to work toward improving victim safety and holding perpetrators of domestic abuse accountable for their actions against individual victims and society as a whole. Move to approve uh, the proclamation is read. Second. I have a motion for approval and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. One thing that I'd like to comment on in 19, I think it was 94, I did a study on yeah. the number of uh, charges for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, magistrate Caroline Stoker was very helpful. And uh, domestic violence was second only to bad checks. Yep. Actions. You know, and it, it would be interesting for domestic violence cases is if we could have a, a data on uh, the number of cases reported and just as important as how many individuals are involved in the number of cases. Because I think what we'd find is a very small percentage mm -hmm. are doing all the, the uh, violence. Mm -hmm. And probably repetitive. But, but unless you have the statistical data to back it up, you know, I don't know where where bad check warrants the charges fall now, but in 94, I believe it was, that was the most common uh, charge in magistrate court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I found interesting, well, not interesting, but, but kind, kind of uh, opened your eyes was, uh, oh, I can't remember who it was, when R Ronald Reagan's, I think he was Secretary of the Interior, was exposed of supposedly beating his wife and children on a, a regular basis. It really jumped out to me and to a lot of other people that you're, it's, it has nothing to do. You think, you think, oh, well, you know, someone goes to the bar and be, no, very highly qualified professionals that uh, may be uh, financially very stable and in powerful positions, they do this too. And, and too many times, those are the people that are the hidden group that you never get a hold of. They hide, they hide the facts so well because of their position and power. So I really appreciate all the work you do to, to probably never bring a stop to it, but we can certainly pray. And I know it would be a lot worse if it wasn't for your all's efforts. You know, you know another area I think that should be, uh, data should be maintained on is geographical in the county to see uh, if there is, is some of the housing areas that yeah. uh, isn't the main contributor or, or contributes a lot. I, I, I just think we missed the boat by not uh, compiling statistical data so that so the people who have have to deal with it can make informed decisions, not just that uh, we got to do something about the domestic violence. And, and one of the things that concerned me is the guy's house for 36 years is what it is has the effect on the children and also uh, what they believe is the right way to deal with a problem and also what we also see, and I call it domestic violence also situation, it's boyfriend, girlfriend issues in the high school. It is unbelievable how much we deal with and ask for your help in those situations because it's, it's almost acceptable behavior and that's something we cannot have. You'd like to get a picture with us? Is yes. the president presenting it? Yes, sir. Correspondence. Um, this isn't really correspondence. 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Reports from elected officials and department supervisors. That's uh, Diane. Sheriff has a um, few more tickets to suspend from the tax list. He has what? A few more listings to be removed from the tax list. He's going to suspend some more yes. tickets. <laughs> Join the list of what they were handed out. <laughs> you all been busy, that's for sure. What uh, we presented you with today are two, uh, well, one letter is on three uh, parcels of property, three different uh, pieces of property that are owned by uh, West Virginia University. And there are in the code um, that's cited here, uh, 11A37, it says that if we believe there may be a problem with properties that we have to ask the commission to suspend them from the uh, tax lien sale. So on those three properties, uh, the university is saying that they own them and they are being used for university educational can, purposes. Can you give us a little more specific location so that we under have a better understanding where uh, they're located? Kelly, do you have any Kelly? more other than the war? Seventh Ward. Uh, it's a United Bank Center, where the United Bank Center is, and the other is the Shoney's property. Oh, okay. Oh. That's where they put in the soccer field, right? Below that. Below that. Actually, yeah. Shoney's. It's, it's the actual Shoney's. And building. what about the one in Star City? Where is it at? That's a show. That's a show. Oh, that's a show. Okay. There's two in seventh ward. That, the two in seventh ward are the two United, the two parcels at the United Center. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One is, uh, I think, parcel sixty nine, and one is parcel. Where Applebee's so. is, and then one. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, we should have put that in. Oh, uh, uh, you need a motion to move. Yes. Uh, I move that we uh, authorize the suspension of these three properties. I'll second, um, but could we? I'm still a little sure. confused. Why? Uh, why are we actually suspending it? Because we're suspending them from sales. Oh, oh. We're, we're not going to auction it off on them. Okay, that's it. Okay, now I understand. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Okay. The second one is on a uh, piece of property in the Clinton District area, the Clinton uh, area. Uh, and for the same reason, this was um, the property that has been double assessed since 1967 uh, on the land books of the county assessor's office. And there was a tax deed issued to Mark Myers for tax year 2012. He bought that property at a uh, lien sale. Lean sale. Mm -hmm. And however, there's a question as to whether this is a valid tax deed due to the duplicate assessment in the name of Solomon for that year. So we're not sure right now who legally has uh, ownership of that property. So you got three people there, Myers, Devers, and Solomon? Yes. <laughs> that so, should be fun to sort out. That's, uh, it'll be interesting. But yeah. because of that, and, and we haven't, uh, or the assessor's office, nor us has determined exactly for sure who Legally owns that piece of property. We're asking for you that don't want to add a you don't want to add a fourth person don't to that add a fourth list. Person, no. I can understand that. I would move that we authorize the suspension of this property from the lien sale. Okay. I have a motion. I, I move that we authorize the suspension of this property. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Anything else, Sheriff? That's. Uh, that's it. It was a fun weekend. Uh, we <laughs> I was going to say. What, yeah, you might want to stay around because we want to talk about I, it. Uh, I just have a question. I noticed in today's paper they were going to establish some kind of center for, in reaction to this riot that took place. And it, and it mentioned, uh, well, my question is, it mentioned everybody but the Sheriff's Department. Yeah. Actually, uh, what the university was talking about doing when uh, establishing the, the center that you're talking about is that they're going to uh, identify, when they identify uh, students that were involved. Uh, my understanding is right now I just left a meeting at the 911 center to, to come down here. 
My understanding is so far there have been about 20 to 25 students that have been recognized. President Gee has already authorized that they be expelled. Uh, Good for President Gee. That. Uh, but that center is going to be set up so that when there's an anticipation of Those something like this happening them. again, we'll be monitoring social media gotcha. outlets. And what they'll have there is uh, uh, students from student government mm -hmm. that will then counter those okay. uh, social media posts that are going out by students saying, let's, like this incident took place, we're going to start this first wave at 10 o'clock, the next one will start at 11. They'll have people from student council then counter that by saying, don't do that. Here are the ramifications if mm -hmm. you gotcha. do this, if you're involved. So to hopefully uh, avert any of those major problems like we had this week. So was this a orchestrated? It was. Yeah. More. By, it, by me. It's by these people. It, you know, I, I don't know how this commission feels, but uh, I would certainly entertain the motion that we uh, commend uh, President Gee and let him know that we fully support the disciplinary action and that uh, we're all in agreement that there needs to be consequences for inappropriate or illegal behavior. Uh, I'll make the motion as stated by President Bartolo. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And I'm going to bring this up, up under my report, so when we get to my reports. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you have? Uh, Sessor's office. Nothing? Uh, town of Granville. Nothing, sir. City of Westover. Why don't you wait till last to ask me? I don't understand. W. Hey, Mayor. Hey, Mayor. Westover, W. Hey, Mayor. I have feelings. Hey, Mayor. They say save the best to last. I'll put it that way. I have nothing to do. Okay, anything else, Diane? Bobby? Vanetta? Jambi? I have one thing. Okay. I'm happy to announce that uh, at all three of our parks now, Cat Muffy has joined the other two in becoming pet friendly. Great. You're now allowed to bring your pets into Muffley and enjoy family time with them. And, uh, you, know, fa you know, pets are a big part of families. And yep. now you can take your pet out there and enjoy the park, <laughs> enjoy everything, enjoy your family with them. As long as you obey the leash laws and the other laws and clean up after them, we're more than happy to entertain the pets. Very good. Very good. That's a very good decision, I think. Thank you. Uh, you, you ought to recognize Tim there because oh, yes. he's our, this is his last time. He's going to abandon us for Michigan. Oh, is he? He ought to give a little speech. Oh, Tim. Him. Yeah, Tim, please. You get, you you get have, your uh, option. Yeah. Comment you want to make, Tim? Uh, I could do like all the other officials and say nothing to report. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to thank everybody here at the commission and all of the heads of the departments and and the assorted public officials for giving me the opportunity to learn a heck of a lot about how not only local government can work, but in my opinion, how local government should work. Um, yeah. It's nice to see a group of people get together. Of course you got to remember what I'm comparing it against. I spent about a year and a, about a year or so covering Detroit City Council. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is nice to see a group of people get together and be able to actually get things done and not get bogged down in governmental red tape and infighting and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, and my opportunity here to be able to report on that kind of thing and bring those... Uh, those stories out to the public has been a real, real learning experience for me, and I'd like to thank everybody here for that. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be missed. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a couple of new students in the back. <laughs> uh, we have a, our protocol is that we'd like, if you would, to please stand and just uh, introduce yourself and what class you're associated with. All right. Um, I'm Justin Holstein. I'm a uh, geography major. A requirement to attend a uh, city council meeting or a commission meeting or something like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We we appreciate you coming. Uh, reports from the county commissioners. Eldon. I spent uh, 
two days in Charleston, which was uh, rather eventful uh, in a way. Uh, I uh, represented the, co the commission, uh, I, and I just wanted to report that I, I did make it very clear that uh, th this commission has made no decision as to any sort of local sales tax or any other sort of funding mechanism that we might use. However, I did carry the message that it was absolutely necessary that the legislature start looks at alternatives that our infrastructure needs. Uh, we have a 400, uh, over $424 million of road improvements we need to get done. 120, $128 million, or $178 million, excuse me, is, uh, uh, is priority, priority one. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to fund them uh, in the next uh, five to ten years, which when we get priority one done, it will just get us up to 2014 standards. Uh, so, the, so the message we carry, and I was happy to go along with the Chamber of Commerce and their different plans and proposals and, and ideas, to ask that the uh, House, uh, the Joint House and Senate Committee on Infrastructure study this issue as to how that it would be uh, proper to uh, to find better means to, to fund uh, road construction because we desperately need it. Uh, one, one of the one of the things I emphasized when I was asked, which is always interesting whenever I go to Charleston, I mean invariably I can't go for more than three hours without someone reminding me how wealthy we are in Montague County. <laughs> and I don't care if it's officials or someone, someone will say, oh, you have all the money in the world up there. Oh, you have all this money. What are you doing down here? You have so much money up here. I heard it over and over again. But I emphasized that it, it's our belief that the people that needs to pay for the roads, because I was brought up by one of one of the delegates, that that well we have so much money and we're our, 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 uh, we're so wealthy, property property wise, that we ought to just raise the taxes and pay for the roads ourselves, and I absolutely shot that down. That is not proper to make the residents and the businesses pay for the roads when you 55% or more of the people that work in, that travel the roads, that clogs them up, are not from this county, which means they wouldn't pay a penny. Yeah. And then the rest of them come in for special events and stuff. So uh, I strongly urge Senator Beach and his committee and uh, uh, Delegate Staggers and her committee to, to study this, uh, this issue and really try to move forward on it, and uh, uh, I carried this commission's support of that message. Okay. Uh, Tom? Yeah. First, I just want to, just real quickly, it just, I'm really glad it's you going down there, not me, because it, it just infuriates me, this West Virginia tunnel vision down in the southern part of the state. So what they're saying is because the community here is successful, because we've diversified, because we're moving forward, we're punished. And, and that, that just, pardon me, well, I don't care. It's asinine. And I'm, I'm really tired. Something has to be done about it. With that being said, um, I know we don't want to rehash what happened Saturday, but I think we have to at least make a comment about it uh, for our constituents. The first thing I want you to know is I, on behalf of the county commission, I went to the uh, Morgantown Fire Department representing our thank yous for what they went through and we really wanted to support them and, and thank them so and they were very appreciative of that um, and I first want to say you know first how proud I am of the football team and the fans who attended the game they stayed the entire game and kept the noise level so high that it clearly affected Baylor's team it was a great win and well deserved however the actions by a small group of individuals spurred on by the crowd on High Street and Grand Avenue are embarrassing and not acceptable on any level. The national exposure that we are getting only amplifies the, sp the stigma that we continue to try and change. After reviewing the reports, I'm thrilled to see that no policeman or fireman was seriously injured. However, what they had to endure was atrocious. They were pelted by rocks, beer bottles, 
and construction materials. Police cars were damaged. Groups of individuals, along with students, ran into construction sites and took materials. And there was property damage. And the cost is extensive. And finally, not all the hooligans, as I call them, were WVU students. We need to be very careful who we blame. As in the past, many are high school and college age individuals who look forward to events such as this one. However, it doesn't matter who they are, I, am, would not, I will not be lenient on those who choose to act as, and I call them, destructive criminals. We have to stop this behavior, and we need everyone to work together to resolve this. And I want to thank WVU President Gordon Gee on this issue for his support and his strong stance, and I believe the three of us will look forward to working with him and the others to resolve this issue. The biggest amazement is we have to learn how to celebrate when we win. Thank you. Well, you know, the other thing that you have to sort of keep in mind is if we're going to play major league football, <laughs> beating the number four team in the country shouldn't be the reason for a ride. Right. I mean, if, if we're expecting to have a quality team, then, then that should be our challenge and that should be uh, just as a matter of a fact that uh, we have a uh, top flight football team and that when anyone comes in here, regardless of the ranking, they have to contend with the Mountaineers. And I think the students detracted from that. To, to beat Baylor, to beat a number four ranked team, to make it like uh, years ago when, when they would beat someone that had a winning record, that that was a major accomplishment. Uh, I, I think we, we need to move past that. Uh, and, I, and I really attribute, I think that's one of the things that Oliver Luck, as, as the athletic director, has tried to do, is to try to move West Virginia athletics into the big leagues. Uh, and to do that, we have to accept the fact that, that that's our standard. That's not an out of the ordinary accomplishment. Right. And, I th and I think that's unfortunately s speaks to the incident that took place by beating a number four team that that's some, uh, it's an accomplishment. And it adds to their record, but it's not so unusual that we need to tear up our city as a result of it or our community. The other comment I have is in line with uh, reading the newspaper about, uh, and then hearing your report today, about the Chamber of Commerce and proposing uh, the uh, road. You know, we all know uh, that it's been repetitive. It's been consistent. And we, that uh, coming out of Charleston, the legislature is counties need to step up and do something about it, uh, the infrastructure. Uh, my uh, my concern is that uh, that needs to be Montgay County stepping up uh, and working in cooperation with uh, the Chamber of Commerce, working in cooperation with the MMPO. But if we're going to establish some guidelines and controls to help contribute to roads, then it ought to be this commission that makes that decision, not not. And I, I don't mean this with any animosity. I just mean it with definition, not the Chamber of Commerce, not the MPMPO, but the Montgomery County Commission that has elected officials. Uh, you know, I think I think we've reached a point, and the way that we can, I think, pursue this, and the way that's appropriate to pursue it, is with county home rule. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think after this election, I would like to see us arrange a meeting, involve the. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, involve MMPO and our elected officials, whoever they may be, and to get us united in a uh, goal of getting the legislature to grant us county home rule so that we can sit down and solve our own problems without being dictated to by people in the legislature that don't even visit this county. Uh, so uh, I'd like to throw that out that, uh, uh, that we set that. Uh, and, and then you can entertain a motion that we, after the election, that we set that meeting. I would, I, I would make that motion and, and, and uh, add that, uh, yeah, that, that's the message uh, that, uh, that we need to, to carry. And, and I, I believe from my discussions with the various groups that, that they understand the importance 
of it being set up just as you described. Yeah. So I would make that motion. And, and I'll second, and I really like the idea of the newly elected members in the House and Senate come to this meeting because I think that's key. Right. We can talk yeah. about but yeah. we need them to actually do it. So I, I second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Good idea. I would like to, I'd like to add one thing. Before sure. You, one thing. If you're finished. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Oh, Go ahead. Uh, I think I texted uh, from Charleston when I heard about all this stuff going on. Uh, and basically the, the point is, is we now have a championship caliber team. They proved it, mm -hmm. and that team deserves championship caliber fans. Good. We didn't have that by a small group. The majority of the fans are championship, right. but as, as Bill said, we've got to be championship fans to support our championship team. Anything else? Uh, no, just... Any comments from the public? Anyone? Any other comment? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to add to what you were just talking about, the countywide home rule or something along that lines. You know, we don't have what used what we used to have, and I'm not sure how or when that changed, but there used to be such a thing as county roads. That's yeah. all state roads. 1933. Has it been that long? Yeah. Well, <laughs> day after I'm born. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I missed it. That's right. <laughs> say about people from the southern part of the state talking about how much money we have in this county because of the property and everything. But, you know, there has to be a way that there's some sort of way to fund these right. roads and, and to be able to do it on the county level, even if it's just dividing the, the divisions of the Department of Highways. Mm -hmm. In other words, if we have one in a tri-county tri area, you know, whatever tax, I, I'm sure some of the gasoline tax goes toward toward uh, the, the maintenance on the highways. Right. Yeah, and it's so all supposed to. Yeah. That should be important. You know, right. school taxes all go, not all that tax stays in this county. It goes to right. the, the smaller counties that don't have the tax out, stays yeah. that some of the larger counties have. Well, you know, we have a lot of people in this town, a lot of developers in this city. We have a lot of businesses in this city that aren't affected by being owed tax because they're not supporting a municipality or participating mm -hmm. in a municipality. Mm -hmm. So if you do have some sort of home rule, some way of capturing something yeah. that that could be applied to whatever the needs of the county are. And you're absolutely right, the MPO, the Chamber of Commerce, they're not the leaders of this county. No. The elected officials are the leaders of this county in these cities. So they're, we're the ones that should have the input and actually we're the ones that should come up with the ideas and the thought process that we need to use to fund a lot of these projects and get, you know, if we got such a great county, Let's do some more things, Charles. Right. You know, that's, that's, yeah. we one, one of the proof that we can do it. So right. It's not a problem. I, I, I agree with you. One of the things I emphasized to the joint committee down there is that uh, we're all in it together. We've got to all work together. We've got to participate. Everyone's got to participate. We've got to collaborate. Uh, the the uh, I did get I did get a positive response out of the DOH. And uh, uh, from the governor's office, that they're shocked as how well Montague County is working together nowadays, and uh, I, I think that speaks volumes to the elected officials uh, from the municipal level as well as the, uh, all our county elected officials to to work together, uh, not only amongst ourselves but with the chamber and uh, the unions and everyone that's involved, anyone that has any interest uh, that speaks volumes of the, the strides that we've made in the last few years. You know, I've, been, I've been accused over the last few years of having a personal agenda as far as Westover is concerned, as far as all the annexation that we've done. So what? I'm yeah. going you know, throw me in jail. Trying to better, better the town. But you know all what? We can all have a personal agenda as long as it's applied to something that's going to affect everybody. Right. Well, you know, the, the, the uh, I think we need to all have the philosophy that if if the town of Granville prospers, Star City, Westover, Absolutely. then we all prosper. Right. Uh, and, and I think we need to adopt that attitude. The other thing that we need to do is we need to come to the realization we cannot place tax burdens solely on the backs of property owners. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear from Charleston and That's you hear it, 
Yeah. That would be another tax. Right. Well, well, that's why we need to be creative. And the only way we're going to be able to be creative is to get home rule. Uh, if we don't, if we can't accomplish home rule, then it will be continued to dictate to us. Well, raise your levy tax. Hmm. Well, the only people you're going to get to pay is property owners. What about non-property owners? Uh, what about people that are passing through using the roads? The users of that. Uh, you know, we we need to have, you know, and I, the first thing that comes to mind is a one cent sales tax. Everybody pays it, whether you're passing through, whether you're a student, regardless of what you do. Uh, I mean, we need to think in those terms, a creative way, so that everybody carries their fair share, and that uh, property tax owners or payers are not the sole source of public funding. I'd like to I'd like to add the message that you just mentioned there was another message that I carried down there is that this is a this the pro, uh, the prosperity of Montague County passes to other counties. Right. Roads and the transportation and the development of those roads passes beyond the county lines. Preston County can develop, Marion County can develop, Wetzel County can develop, Taylor County can develop. And when they develop, they Grant County, Miller mm -hmm. County, Tucker County, Harrison County. It's a domino effect. It's a domino effect. That's 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 was a part of the message I carried. We can if we're willing to all accept success. It's kind of interesting because it kind of fits with what the basketball the, or the football team just went to. If we're willing to accept and fight for success for all of us, then we all become champions. Yeah. And that's the only way West Virginia is going to get out of 48th, 49th on most everything. Hmm. Anything else? Move for adjournment. I have a motion oh, a to. Comments from the public. There. Oh, comment from the public. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Move uh, to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We are adjourned. <laughs>